In this video, we've got uh, particles A and B are connected by a light inextensible string over a smooth pulley, as shown in the diagram. A rests on a rough horizontal table. Both particles are initially at rest. Particle B is held one metre above the ground and is released. It takes 10 seconds for B to hit the ground. Assuming there is at least one, meters be one meter between particle A and the pulley, find the magnitude of the frictional force F. Okay, so we're trying to figure out what F is in order that B is going to take 10 whole seconds to hit the ground. Okay, that's the situation that we have. So we can see that actually particle B is three kilos. Okay, uh, particle A is only half a kilo. So ordinarily, if this was a smooth table, then it would rush to the ground very quickly. Okay, but in order for it to take 10 seconds, the frictional force uh, being applied to A must be so severe that it's actually st stalling B so much that it's taking a, a 10 full seconds to hit the ground. Okay, so that's what we're trying to figure out here. So let's see what we can set up. So if we have a look at particle A and we resolve the forces horizontally, taking to the right as positive, okay? So remember, right, we've got the acceleration working in this direction, okay? Uh, these directions for the A and the B. So if we resolve horizontally, taking to the right as positive, we've got the tension, okay, taking us that way. We've got the frictional force working against us, and that's got to be equal to the mass times the acceleration, okay? So that's our first equation. Now the second equation for B, okay, uh, resolving downwards, taking down as positive, we've got 3G, take away T is equal to the mass times the acceleration, okay? So um, we have two equations here, but three unknowns. So we've got a little bit of a problem. Um, now what we can do is we can add those two equations together and it will knock out t, okay? So if we add these together, we're going to get 3g take away f is equal to 3.5a, okay? So we know that much. Now, from here, we're going to have to look at the SUVAT equations, okay? Because that's really all we can do. We haven't mu got much else to go on. So, what we know is that we've got to travel one meter. So that's S. The initial speed, okay, is that they are at rest, so that would be zero. We don't know the final velocity. We don't know the acceleration, okay, uh, but we do know the time is 10. Now, the thing with the acceleration is that we do have an equation for the acceleration here, because I could divide both sides by 3.5, and I get this. So I could insert that in here, and then I've got the acceleration, okay? So if I had an equation that has S, U, A, and T, so the one without V, which is that number three, I could substitute everything that I know into that third equation, and hopefully then I've got one equation with one unknown. So S is one, and that's got to be equal to U times T, so zero times 10, so zero, plus one half, so one half, times a, which is the 3g minus f over 3.5, times by uh, t squared, which is 100. So I now have an equation with just the one unknown, the f. Remember the g I'm going to take as 9.8. So let's multiply everything by 2 and 3.5. So multiply everything by 7. So we get 7 is uh, 100 lots of 3g minus f. So let me write it like that. Right, I can divide both sides by 100. So 3g minus f is going to be 0 0.07. And then, if I add the f to both sides 
and then subtract the 0 0.07 from both sides. So we've got 3 times g, take away 0 0.07, and that gets me 29.33 newtons. So to two significant figures, okay, we'd be at 29 newtons. Okay, to two significant figures. Now, um, that is the force, the frictional force that would have to be uh, applied to A in order to slow B down enough in order for it to take 10 seconds to hit the ground.